The wonderful Vidhu Vinod Chopra is here. Such an honor and, and pleasure to talk to you again. Thank you, Rishi. Thank you so much. I want to start with, with Tom Stern. I mean, here's a man who's, who's filmed uh, a Changeling and Hunger Games and Million Dollar Baby and all these, these films which are iconic films, uh, pretty much a regular with Clint Eastwood. He gave your film just the edge it needed. When did you first get in touch with him? Were you convinced you wanted to work only with Tom or were there other people you were working, you were thinking of working with for Broken Horses? See, I had a good fortune that my script actually was uh, called in Hollywood at that time one of the best independent scripts that were going around. And that really helped. I know, I like Tom very much. I had Janos Kaminsky who does uh, Steven Spielberg's film also very keen to do the movie. But what I liked about Tom, he lives in France and he's an intellect. I am a very basic guy and he really wonderfully... He was my counterpoint. He was a thinker. I was the doer. But the great thing about Tom Stern is, and I loved him because of Mystic River, a film that you didn't mention. He's done such a great job. Sean Penn. Sean Penn. And so uh, all these guys came to me for two reasons. For the script, and they all saw my previously directed film, Eklavya, and loved it. So that is how they worked with me. And you know, Tom and everybody worked with me with less salary because of the fact they liked the script in me so much. It's so difficult, you know, when I, when I came out of NFDC after watching the, the screening, to think that uh, here's a man who, who doesn't know America that well. Online, you've actually made a statement saying, I don't know America that well. But you seem to know the nuances of the, uh, the Mexican border. How was that? Was that was research, reading? How did it go uh, with Abhijat and you when you were planning this film? See, I spent one year traveling there. One year. It's like really, I came to know the landscape. In Hindi, we say ke mitti ki khushbu. So that khushbu was very important for me. So all the characters that I've created in the movie are characters that I have either met or seen. I actually spent a lot of time in a place called Lordsburg, which is in New Mexico. It's a godforsaken town. It has one restaurant. It is horrible food. I stayed there for a month writing this film. So it, it is real because it's... And that is why we are getting the kind of reviews, as you know, we are getting in New York and LA and everywhere. Because I spent time there researching the people, the landscape. See, otherwise you can't do it. Otherwise it's a fake movie. You know, somebody said very jokingly, he said, it's like Quentin Tarantino going to India and doing 1942 love stories. Can he do it? I said, he can, if he comes to Bollywood and study us for years and know who, who we are. But otherwise he can't. <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio, I remember seeing him in Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. He was spectacular. Recently, I saw him with Robert Duvall in The Judge, which was a smaller part. Uh, again, how did that casting process work? Who's your casting uh, director? Let's talk about the casting process. See, they were very good guys. There was Kerry and Paul, Kerry in, uh, in LA and Paul in New York. And the, the greatest thing in that casting was because Reliance Entertainment was backing me after three years. I didn't have to take calls of working with actors who were stars and not the right actors. Uh, you might recall that at time Nicolas Cage was attached, Mickey Roke was attached, a lot of people were attached. But I wanted the right actor for the right role, which is what I did, let's say, in a film like Munna Bhai MBBS. I didn't take a big star, I took Sanjay Dutt, he was right for the role. And Vincent D'Onofrio met me in New York, he came on a cycle to meet me. As he got off the cycle, I saw him and I said, this is Julius Henge, literally. And I cast him in the very first meeting with him. And, and he was not sure because at that time we had some interest from people like Harrison Ford in the movie. And, and this guy actually thought that I will go for a bigger name. But uh, when I got him, he was like, he told me this after one week. He says, I'm so glad that, that we are working together because my agent said that either De Niro or Harrison Ford will get the <laughs> role. Vidhu Vinod Chopra films always have interesting relationships between brothers. And there's another very, very interesting relationship between brothers. Is, is that a, a testament to your relationship with your brother? Interesting relationship. Sometimes it can be autobiographical. It is. It is. Clearly it is. I'm very close to Veer, my brother, who's older than me. And, uh, you know, we grew up together in Kashmir. He paid for my fees when I went to the film school. I was very poor. I mean, my father, who was honest, was very poor. I had no money. So, we got a job worth 1100 rupees in TAS and out of that 250 he had to send there and if we had not got the job I couldn't have gone to the film school as simple as that so really and uh, even now we speak at least at least twice a day in the morning and night just to say good morning and good night so so yeah and I'm very close to my whole family but I am and that's why it's also strangely you know Julius Hench is like a father figure to Buddy it's convoluted but he really loves him and Buddy really loves Hench so it's a, I am a basically a family man and I love my family and I love my brother. <laughs> I write what I 
फील वो हिंदी का गाना है ना देंगे वही जहां को जो पाएंगे जहां से हम लेट्स डू अ रीवाइंड नाउ टू व्हेन यू फर्स्ट थॉट ऑफ मेकिंग अ हॉलीवुड फिल्म आई मीन देयर वाज नो नीड फॉर यू टू डू सो आई मीन योर द मोस्ट सक्सेसफुल करंट प्रोड्यूसर इफ यू लुक एट योर बॉडी ऑफ वर्क एज अ डायरेक्टर आई मीन योर 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 ओनली योर ओन कंपटीशन सो व्हाई डिड यू थिंक ऑफ गोइंग वेस्टवर्ड्स योर आइडिया अभिजात जोशीज आइडिया और डिड इट जस्ट हैपन टेक अस थ्रू दोस मोमेंट्स सी द द बिग थिंग फॉर मी वाज दैट इट इट वाज नो नो लॉन्गर अ चैलेंज आफ्टर थ्री इडियट्स आई वाज टॉप ऑफ द हीप सो टू से एंड इट बिकेम वेरी बोरिंग you know there's this uh, <laughs> there's a lovely movie you must have seen in this the monkey sings it's called the uh, jungle book it says uh, i am the king of the jungle the top of the end. i'm so bored i want to be like you man man cub so it's basically i was that monkey who was very bored so <laughs> i wanted to throw another challenge at me and this was a crazy challenge because i don't know english very well i learned my english when i was like 15 16 years old in a small school in kashmir in in a village in dav school so for me to write produce and direct it's completely crazy it was completely madness actually that drove me to do it but the the idea was the challenge was so great that it made made it worthwhile and i didn't take a i mean abijath has worked with me on pk on three dates on you know munna bhai and to have indian writers write in a movie like this was something that i thought will bring pride to to india and to me and and that's exactly how i feel today again the internet could be the great truth or the biggest gossip monger i was reading somewhere that abijath initially suggested to you to make parinda in english was that true <laughs> yeah yeah he did <laughs> but we started from there so the journey of broken horses actually started from the brothers in parinda but of course as you you've seen the film so we've come a long way from there now let's talk about the the wild west where the where the movie is set i mean these are modern times but uh, still turbulent times is there so much lawlessness even t- till today what is what did your research show you absolutely you won't believe the wild west it's like a time warp when when you go to places like uh, lordsburg and then you go to arizona you go to el paso we cross the border at hakumba you know when we were shooting in hakumba you remember that scene when they go to the border to meet when uh, hench goes to border to meet uh, mario garza convoy of cars that's right it was a real border town and i was shooting and the sun was going to set if you recall the last shot i took was the sun setting the moment the sun set the border guys came to me they said you got to leave now mr chopra i said give me Five minutes. Give me five minutes. I have to take one shot. He says, "Well, if you get shot, it's not you know we are not responsible." I said, "What do you mean shot?" He says, "They kill you from across the border." <laughs> you know, within minutes, the whole crew had run because that's where I was exactly. Also, the the principal villain. Uh, you know, I I couldn't call Hench the, the villain, but Ga- Garza is his name, right? He looked like Andy Garcia for a moment, and then I, I you know at, at closer quarters I realized it wasn't Andy Garcia. Let's talk about some other members of the cast. Who is he, and uh, where did you discover him from? See, it's a big joke. Andy Garcia and me travelled together in a plane in Lufthansa plane. In Lufthansa first class, there are two seats, so we sat together, and uh, he read my script, and I read his script. I didn't like his script so much, but he liked mine, and he told. me whenever you make the film i will play the garza role and then andy garcia was not uh, when we were there he was not available those days he was doing something else and i met this guy who reminded me of garza and i'm amazed that you said that because it was like a hangover of andy garcia in that role and, and this guy did a great job i really loved him he's he's a well, very well known actor in america in la and the two principal characters which is the brothers uh, a bit about them i like their nuance performance one of them is not really slow is he what is the disease what is he born is he is he aut- slightly autistic what is the character we did a lot of research on this and there are so many reasons for a person to be little slow he could be autistic he could be you know when when the kids are born sometimes because of the blood and all that in the brain It's a little let's say in my view I have always called him blessed I said you're blessed you're like a kid you're like a child and that is why he he loves his brother like a child and also when he gets violent and angry like a kid he he hits and you know kills that man so it's like it's like a it's like a, we haven't defined the disease because we didn't want to define it but let's say he's 
little challenged mentally or he's little slow or or in my words he's blessed loyalty is is a human trait that is there irrespective of what your mind frame might be which is amazing his loyalty to his to his boss to his brother which i thought you, you showed so beautifully and the other actor who, who who's a violin virtuoso and yet lives such a, a strange life because he goes back home after 8 years tell me about that actor well he's anton yelchin he's a he's a well known actor he's in star track and he was with mel gibson in some film and i had a choice i mean not a choice there was andrew garfield and anton yelchin and andrew garfield was in london and actually he was almost in the movie and then same time um, spider man happened and there were again a date clash and i had to wait for 6 months for andrew and i was ready to go sounds like a hindi film <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it was absolutely like hindi totally totally his agent told me go to london meet andrew he likes this script i said yeah listen i can't go to london i'm you know two weeks away from shoot anton i like very much and anton has a great reputation as an actor he looks like a young uh, johnny depp in the movie so uh, so i went with anton and the girl is breathtakingly beautiful i thought she was actually italian because she plays italian in the film but i did some googles and i found out she's spanish so tell us a little bit about that beauty well she was absolutely so beautiful that i wanted to run away with her <laughs> i wonder what your lovely wife anu would say about that <laughs> i told anu i said you better come to america before i run away with maria belverde she was very nice i called her maria belverde and she kept saying with her accent it's belverde and she it was like she's stunning actually in the movie there was a shot they when they make love and it was a i mean there was frontal nudity it is very beautiful shot and um, she looked stunning but unfortunately that shot is out of the film because when i cut it that it didn't work for me she was a very beautiful woman absolutely uh, is a very beautiful woman yeah the story actually could have been set anywhere why in particular did you choose that lawless border i mean you could have set it anywhere you could have set it in colombia you could have set it in in other areas i mean if if the border conflict itself was that whose idea was it to go that particular route see for me because i didn't know america well what i did rishi i said let me go to the basic elements which is water fire wind earth so because those elements i know they are in rajasthan they are anywhere else water in india is the same lake is the same as it there so i went in search of those elements i told abhijat i said yaar tu sab america bhul ja let's go to basic element and that is how we landed in on, in the desert of of mexico so it wasn't that we were looking for that landscape but that landscape is the only landscape i know and uh, so that's how we land and then of course while we were doing that the film became like a tribute to sergio leone who did westerns out of italy he didn't even know english so he was like absolute genius so that's that's how it is you enjoyed all those spaghetti westerns a man with no name and stuff oh like that oh my god he was he was a genius absolutely yeah, absolutely i'm one of those who stays back till the absolute end of the end credits so i noticed that shantanu's name is there shantanu mitra additional music yeah, yeah. so what is his contribution to broken horses see because john debney is a great uh, composer he's done iron man uh, too and all that but shantanu had stayed with me through conception this is also by the way the first time that a bengali composer has actually joined hands with a big hollywood composer to record music in a big studio in in warner brothers and we were recording in macedonia through video so it was amazing uh, for me shantanu we lived together we had a big house in la where abhijat me shantanu we all lived and most of the uh, music we thought of in the pool i mean we lived well we had a pool and we had a big house and most of the music was created in my head with shantanu while we were swimming there <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> while, <you're swimming. laughs> while we were swimming in beverly hills let's put it that way we had a good time <laughs> I I want to ask you the secret of keeping a core team together. It's remarkable. You see in this in the good old days if our parents worked for one company for 15 years or 20 years we'd consider them loyal and you know great servants to society and to the company. These days if you weren't work for at one I mean given even the radio business you work for one radio station for too long this was you're not getting a, a job outside is it? In this fast paced world where you know youngsters are jumping from one place to another the fact that Raju Hirani the fact that Abhijat Joshi yourself have stayed through the decade what is the secret of that how do you keep them happy see uh, i think the reason is very simple because i am really striving for excellence at all the times and people who like to strive for excellence they stay on 
Uh, in my company, everybody's there for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Even the staff downstairs, if you ask them, they've been here for God knows how many years. It's, I think it has to do more with my father, the way he brought me up, than, than me. Yeah, let me tell you a completely mad story, which will look completely crazy to the young people who might be listening to this radio program. When I was growing up, my father used to <coughs> go to the garden and we used to watch from Upar. The birds used to come and he used to do, give roti to the birds. And then the street dogs used to be outside our door and then the dogs were fed and then he used to look up and we used to say okay it's time and then we used to go and have breakfast it was a routine as a kid so I never asked him seemed like the normal thing to do then one day I asked him I said why do we have to wait I'm getting late for school he said till you take care and he said it in Hindi let me say in Hindi then I'll translate he said Jab tak wo jeev, jo aap pe depend karte hai, till you take care of them you shouldn't take care of yourself which means anybody who's dependent on you you need to first take care of those beings then take care of yourself so I come from that very old school those values have stayed with me I'm not I mean not even one tenth of what my father was but I think those values are what maybe some people find attractive and they don't go anywhere. I mean, Abhijat Joshi was offered a big film in, in, in uh, Hollywood. And he said, uh, he quoted Godfather. He said, you know, I only work for one client. <laughs> Spectacular. Let me quote some more values to you. Your wonderful wife. Uh, uh, when I did an interview with you for Mommy, I got in touch with her because I know you're not very active on social networking. So I said, I know you have millions of fans. So why don't you tweet out that Vidhu Vinod Chopra is doing an interview with me? You will increase my listenership base. And she refused to do yeah, so. Yeah. And she said, you know, if it was anybody else, if you're interviewing Amir, <laughs> I'll do that. And she says, I promise you that if you come to my car now, you will only hear your radio station because I only listen to your program. But I can't do this. Does that work with you too? <laughs> as far as she is concerned? You know, even Broken Horses, she has a huge Twitter following. There's nothing she has tweeted. No, no trailer, no James Cameron, nothing. Because that is the integrity that, that I believe in. I believe that is the purity. That's why I'm a freak in today's world. I don't have any friends because how can I have friends? Everybody wants to be friends for some ulterior motive. You know, there was a big star who said once on, on um, in paper I read, oh, Vidhu is in my 3 a.m. friend. I asked him, I said, what does this 3 a.m. friend mean? He said, that means, you know, he can call you 3 a.m. I kind of believed it because I'm from old school, but it's all marketing. I mean, they don't, nobody means anything. They just say it because it's the right thing to say. So uh, for me, I'm not like that. So this is who we are. I mean, Anu would never tweet broken horses. Never. There's nothing. I mean, we've got some great reviews. I mean, she could say something, but no. Does that work for you too? I mean, do, do you go out of your way to make sure that, you know, on her show, which is so successful, you know, you don't uh, unnecessarily say it's glow, you know, glowing, give glowing tributes. Of See, let me tell you another big joke. There was a show that I don't remember what, there were all these wives, there were 10 wives. I think this, uh, those guys who make costumes or dresses, they're designers, Abu Sandeep, they did that. And all husbands went for that show and all husbands sang and danced and loved their wives. I was the only husband who said, no, I don't have to go on TV to let the world know how much I love my wife. So I didn't do it. So, <laughs> you know, why should I go on television and say, Anupama, I love you? It's ridiculous. And, and the funny thing is, out of those 10 husbands, a few who sang songs are, are now separated. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Why do it? James Cameron and Alfonso Cuaron, they've said uh, such glowing things about Broken Horses. Uh, your relationship with them, you know, you, you, you've, you've obviously, uh, there's a mutual admiration society going. Talk about that. Not really. Not really. Alfonso uh, knows me. Alfonso had seen 1942 A Love Story and he was the one who said it's such a great transition, such a smooth transition from 42 to Broken Horses. Is I can't believe it's the same director. Uh, and that is how we talked about Quentin Tarantino coming to India and doing 1942 love story but uh, James Cameron is not not a friend at all he's somebody I I respect I look up and he saw the film by complete uh, it was a freak chance he read the script and he loved the script and he called me and he wanted to meet the writer and hire the writer so I when I told him that I had written it with Abhijat he was pleasantly surprised and he said I didn't see your name on the script I said I didn't put it Jim he said why I said you know if you read a script Broken Horses on the Mexican drug war and it's say written by why not Chuck and Abhijat Joshi. I said, you'll be checking my spellings on page 3. I don't. By, by page 10, you would say, who are these Bollywood guys? What do they know about Hollywood? I said, you would have thrown my script away. He started laughing. <laughs> he said, you, you, you're a genius, Vinod. I also laughed. I said, it's a big planet. Jim, there could be two of us. <laughs> and he became friend. And he, when the movie got ready, we told him and we were pleasantly surprised because he'd liked the script. 
He saw he was the first one. Let me tell you, I will be eternally grateful to Jim Cameron because I don't know him. In that big theater, he saw the film. He was sitting right in front and I was right at the back making my notes. He saw the film almost six months back. And before the titles, it was still dark. I heard clapping and he came all the way back clapping. You know, for a moment, I thought he's going to come and tell me Bollywood comes to Hollywood, you know, rubbish. Because he was so over the top. He just came to me and gave me a hug and says, I can't believe you did it, you know. And then he sat for an hour and a half and praised. You know, the first thing he told me, which I'll again, he said, how long did it take you to storyboard this film? And I said, I didn't storyboard, Jim. He said, what? You have these compositions without storyboard? Now, you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. I said, no, I said, I improvise with the actors and I compose on the set. He said, shit, you, <laughs> these compositions are on the set. I said, yeah. Then he just sat me down and started talking. One and one and a half hour he praised. And then much later, we asked him for a press statement, which he gave, which is very rare. Again, I was in Bhutan when I read that statement. And I was in a monastery when I was reading it. I went, oh, oh, I couldn't believe that he had done that. And then when Fox said, let's ask him for a video bite, I said, are you crazy? You're going to ask Jim Cameron on the New Zealand shooting avatar to give a video bite for Broken Horses? He won't give it. They insisted. I wrote to him within one week. He recorded it himself with four cameras and sent it. So I cannot even tell you how grateful I am to James Cameron because not only that just tell you, tells you how gracious and how giving this man who has a terrible reputation, his reputation is much worse than mine, is actually so gracious. The term broken horses is used as a very unique metaphor in the film. Talk about that. Talk about how you thought of the title. You could even, you could have called it Blood Brothers. You could have called it so many things. See, had Indians we think of Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers was my first title. I'm shocked you said it. That is my title. <laughs> first title was Blood Brothers. And uh, then it went on and then I came to know while I was doing my research, somebody told me what a broken horse was because I didn't know what a broken horse was. And when they told me that a broken horse is a horse, wild horse that's tamed and when he's tamed, we say we broke it. I love the term. I love the idea. Uh, Steven Spielberg loved the title also, I know for a fact. But it just struck me as that's a very nice word, broken horse. And that's how I, I took it. It was part of my research. It, it's, I didn't think of it. I heard it from somebody else. Jason Richman, I still remember, said it to me in, in LA, that this is what it means. So what does it mean now? You've, uh, you've tasted, the tiger has tasted blood. <laughs> will, we, will we see you come back and, and do more Hindi cinema? I mean, there hasn't been anything the directorial front since Ekel Avya. Nobody can doubt your involvement in your productions. But I'm saying, you know, wielding the, uh, the megaphone, so to say. Are you thinking of it? Or you feel that, you know, uh, Indian cinema doesn't have any challenges to give you? <laughs> you know, it, it's actually... <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's, I don't know. I'm not a man who plans, Rishi. I'm a man who lives. I, I live my life, really. I live every moment of it. And if any script comes my way, which I would want to direct here, I will do it. At this given moment, some major studios are wooing me. They're sending me scripts. And that's very interesting to, to take the next step. But I'm totally open to, to anything. Life is too short to make plans, you know. Life is, life is to be lived. And I'm, I'm really living every, every moment. I'm, the fact that I made a debut at 62 is the first time in, uh, I, it's the first thing I've done. So that's, that tells you that I don't plan. You don't look a day over 45. So what is it? Is all gym, gym work or eating right? I, I think it's my, also my state of mind. And because look, my film is releasing in two days, I guess. Do you see in me that, oh, my film is releasing in two days? I was. I came at twelve. I had my bath. I just relaxed. I had breakfast. You know, played with my and came down at twelve. I. I don't care. I do good work. I try and do my best work. And if you like it, I'm grateful. If you don't like it, guys, it's still my best work. I couldn't do better than Broken Horses. You know what I mean. So there is a kind of peace. It's. It's not. There's no conflict within me. And also because I'm childlike, I know people tell me, and I'm not. I'm not. Uh, Constant. My mind is not overworked. If I'm talking to you, I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I'm not saying, oh, this is on radio. It's time for me to change my voice to a little bass and, you know, say, I even, you know, I don't give a damn about how, what people think of me. I, I, what I value is what I think of myself. And I think that keeps me young and going. Did you think that PK would beat uh, Three Idiots' record? Did you really believe that? You didn't? I absolutely did not. I absolutely did not. I knew PK would do well, but the fact that it'll break the records, I, I, I Never thought of that. Because frankly, between you and me, I like Three Idiots. As a, I actually, I like Lagero Munna Bhai. Hell of a lot. And for me, uh, what PK did was a very, very good thing. 
I think, and, and, and you know, the thing that moved me in PK was Shantanu Moitra, whose name you mentioned, he told me that his parents saw it and his mother said, I wonder if we wasted our life. That really touched my heart, that it, it reached people who had spent their life running after these Babas and they were questioning that, oh my God, did we do right? So for me, at that front, the film was greatly successful. But uh, personally for me, I never thought it'll do that well. Whenever I speak to Kashmiris, whether it's you or Mr. Kher or Sanjay Suri, and even if there's a brief mention of Kashmir, I just find the tone changing and the feeling changing. You haven't gone there to film since Mission Kashmir, or have you? And is there anything on the anvil on Kashmir, a documentary or a film? No, no, there is. There's a guy called Rahul Pandita who's writing for me a film called Pachasmi Salgira, which we've been writing now for four years. It's it's not still there. If it ever reaches where it should reach, I'll make. Uh, that's that's the only film I'll direct if I. Direct. I mean, in India, that's the next film I want to direct, if I direct. Um, but And if the script becomes what I feel it should, unless it, it becomes that involving, I won't do it. But yes, because, you know, it's for us, we, it's our homeland. We've lost it. And it's, it, 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 whenever I was in Hollywood, in Beverly Hills, making this great movie, or, or at least I thought I was making it, I could never forget my school in Amira Kadal in Srinagar, where I grew up. And, and growing up in Kashmir was actually it's, it's beautiful because it was, uh, apart from the great four weathers that we saw, um, it was, you know, it was a perfect childhood that you go and you steal cherries from the tree. It's like a I could I could do an autobiographical movie that would be so cute. I might do that. Who knows? Last couple of questions. I want to go back to early Vinod Chopra briefly. You have a student film which is cultish. Yeah. <laughs> You won a national award for that? Yes. Murder at Monkey Hill or on Monkey Hill? Murder, murder at Monkey Hill. It won the national award. It won uh, a lot of awards. It won uh, Leipzig Best Student, some Montreal Best Student. It, it, that, that you remember that boy? Or <laughs> 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 Have you grown out of Let me tell you one last thing, how much I remember. I've just come, come from Calcutta. Calcutta, they put me up at the Oberoi Grand this time. I'd never stayed there. Uh, when I went there, the first memory that came to me, there's a little circle and I remembered as students that... Darban used to keep us out and we used to come there during festival, Calcutta festival, to look at <laughs> Satyajit Rai, Shashi Kapoor and there was Zanusi. You know, we just, we couldn't come in. This time I went, I was actually busy on my phone doing emails and suddenly the car stopped. And as usual, that happens to me in most places. I saw the general manager, I saw, you know, flowers, I saw this. And then, then they took me to the presidential suite and there was a cake with the broken horses and all. You know, after they left, I almost, and I'm not a very emotional man, I almost had tears in my eyes. I couldn't believe that I was in that hotel where I could not enter. Forget having a cup of tea, which of course I couldn't do. I could not enter and here I was. So I'm very, very grateful, Rishi, for what God has given me. I'm a great believer and I'm extremely grateful to circumstances that be, uh, powers that be. Uh, I mean, the, the the right thing on radio to say would be, I'm grateful to my fans for love, you know, but really, God, there are circumstances that, that, that there are powers that we don't know. There's ultraviolet uh, infrared in this room. You can't even see it. But, you know, you can't see it. So, there is something, no. So, whatever it is, I was very, very grateful. So, I've never forgotten that, Vinod Chopra, that, that you must know. I remember yesterday. So, he's, he's very much a part of my personality. And you did sit, sit next to Jane Fonda in your kurta pajama <laughs> at the Oscars. Yeah, that, 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 I'm, I'm telling them to try and get a picture. I hope by next week we'll have a picture. That'll be very funny. Vidhu Vinod Chopra, I, ca I can't understand whether I enjoy interviewing you more or watching your films more. But it's a, it's a beautiful dichotomy. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Rishi.